Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, hello again, my name is Pastor Nathan Roberts with Rock San Antonio, and this is my guest today, Miss Mozella Wilson. And today we just want to uh, just shortly talk about something that was really dear to me this uh, today. I was um, in prayers this morning, and uh, before I came on the set this morning, just wanted to share with you uh, one of the greatest things that men and women are having controversies with today. And that is really understanding really who God is. And for us to say that we have a relationship with God, but don't really know who God is, is really to say that we are actually uh, causing a lot of division with not only the Christians, but those who are hearing us. So I thought today that it would be interesting if we would start to talk about really who God is. And for me, for me to say to you that God is sovereign in all of his ways, I could say that to you, but honestly, maybe don't understand the meaning. Uh, maybe I don't understand what the definition is. So today I just want to, I want to visit sovereignty and be able to let our audience know today the importance of who God is because just because we understand that God is, you must understand everything about God. So for us, even in our ministry, in this kingdom talk, this is actually trying to put a pulse on really what people believe. And for us, it's important that people understand who God is because don't you know, um, you can ask God to save you, but how can you continuously say the things that you don't agree with? It's wrong. You know, there's a lot of things that's happening even in today that we see we don't agree with, but at the same time we say God's not in control of that. Sure. Catastrophic events is happening all around the world. Amen. But we first must have to understand that God is in control of everything Amen. He does. Everything Amen. that is here, He's in control of it. Amen. Um, and when we start to know who He is, then only then can we really say we trust Him. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 talks about trusting the Lord with all of your heart and lean not. Lean not into your own understanding. Why? Because the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 7 and 8, His ways are not our ways, nor His thoughts to be our thoughts. The heavens is higher than the earth. Amen. This is where His thoughts come from. And the only time that we can say we understand is with this book. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this, you know, today I want to just share briefly with, not only with you, but with the listening audience that God is sovereign. Amen. And I want to just open it up uh, today with a scripture, First Chronicles chapter 29, starting at verse 11. Your, yours, O Lord, is the greatest the power and the glory, the victorious, the victory and the majesty. For the, all that is in heaven and in the earth is yours. Your kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. That means, that means something to me. Even when we say that, it means something. Amen. It's, it's powerful, it's a statement. He says everything here, ultimately he's in control of. He's the highest, highest power. Amen. And when we look at that, even looking at it today. So this morning, just briefly, I wanted to share with our audience and with those around, just to understand sovereignty. Sovereignty, let me just, give you a definition of what it is. Amen. Amen. Sovereignty, according to the Wikia, uh, 
uh, encyclopedia, sovereignty is defined as the exclusive right to exercise absolute authority, power, dominion over a geographic region or a group of people without interference or intrusion from an outsized force or entity. That's a powerful, that's a powerful definition. So when we hear about, when we understand who God is, that means he is without interruption, without any, without any type of intrusion. So whenever God wants to do something, no power, no might, no will to no one, he's subject to. Amen. And when we start to understand that, we start to really understand the value of who we trust, who we say we serve. However, in the kingdom of God, sovereignty does not refer to the right of God. Instead, it refers to the realm of how he qualifies himself to operate. Amen. Amen. This is his nature. This is how he, this is who he is. So, you know, I thought about this this morning and just looking at different aspects. Uh, absolute power. Let's talk about absolute power for a second. Absolute power is a science power that is followed is the ability to work. However, in the arena of human relationships and interaction, power is defined as the ability to influence the actions of others or to control the environment around oneself. Now, combining these two definitions, we arrive at the working definition and how its ability to make things happen or to get things done. So that means God is in control of everything. Amen. He's able to make things happen. He's able to make things, uh, to put things in perspective of how things get done. Yeah. We want to today just look at just a few uh, things with power. We understand today, looking at certain things in scriptures, they have uh, a few scriptures that talks about power. Now today, even looking at it today, when we look at power, um, in Matthew chapter 6 and 24 through 30, it talks about a power, and that power is dunamis. Now, dunamis means a demonstration of power. Now, when we talk about power, we talk about the power to exercise a right. Amen? Amen. Now, when we talk about the power that God has given us in Luke chapter 10 and 19, um, the Bible says that he has uh, given us authority to operate in his absence which means he's given us exubia to rule. Now, that means this. That means that God has given you the exubia is the Greek term for power over the dunamis is the power that Satan operates in. So Satan operates in a power, but he doesn't have authority. So when God has given you authority, it overrules his power. Now, let me help you understand what that means. Yes. Now, let's just say I'm, God has given me authority, okay? He's given me authority to operate in his absence, okay? Let's just say it like this. So let's say that I would say, Mozella, I need you to come home and babysit uh, my grandchildren. Okay. Now, you understand that you have the power to... Uh, to hold, to discipline, to the right to rule over the children because your power is greater than their powers because they're, are, they're young kids. They don't have a lot of power. That means that what you have over them, you have more power than they have. So you can take them and restrain them if need to be. Amen. So, but this is the thing. If I say, Mozilla, come and babysit my grandchildren, but they cut up or they act out and you want to discipline them. Well, you can't discipline them unless I give you the right to discipline them. Amen. You, you know that you have the power to do it, mm -hmm. but you don't have the authority to do it. Oh, <laughs> so it. I'm that's saying good. God gives us the authority 
to rule over Satan's power. Yes. And when we understand that, that means that, think about this for a second. How much power God has to give us authority over Satan's power? That means if he has that, uh, that much authority, what now conflicts whatever he wants to get done, whatever he wants to rule and reign over? There's nothing to interact with him because now he's exercising a power that he's given you authority to do over Satan. So how can we look at God today and say that he don't have the power to do whatever he wants to do on earth? That is a, uh, that is a statement that ultimately people don't understand. How can we say God is not in control hmm. and he's given you power, authority over Satan? Yeah. Now, if he's given you authority, don't he have the right to rule? Amen. So how could he not be in control? I think that statement that people make is really because they don't understand this term. What's the term you think it is? Sovereignty. Amen. When you get saved, sovereignty is the first thing you need to understand. You know why? Because even with my wife, knowing who she was, I still had to learn about her. I still had to know the things that she disliked, the things that she liked, the things that set her off. Because to love my wife is to get to know my wife. Amen. To love someone is to know who he is. So how can we as disciples slash Christians say we know God, but don't know his nature, don't know how he operates? don't know the things that he's called us to do. For us to say that, it's a statement that is in really inconclusive because we really don't know who he is. Because if we knew who he was, then why would we judge the wrongs that are happening in the world? Amen. I know I've been talking a lot more, but what do you think? What do you think? Um, what do you think about uh, when people make a statement that God is not in control. I disagree with that statement because the God that I know, he will use certain things to make other things happen. Right. Everything's a sacrifice. Right. It's a sacrifice to bring children into the world. Right. The Lord has chosen women to do it. And every time a woman decides to have a baby, she is sacrificing her life. And the baby being born, is, life is also being sacrificed because Who's to say it's going to come out and it's going to come out okay? And who's to say after the mama gives birth that she's going to be okay? So everything's a sacrifice. God give it, then he takes it away. Right. He, he uh, uh, will use anything and anybody. I've seen some of the, the worst people start out one way and they just take off in another. And it's only God. Right. He's a miracle worker. He could turn a no into a yes. He could turn a yes into a no. Whatever it is that works in your favor, he's got you. Right. So for people to say God's not in control, it's, it's untrue. Right. I feel bad because at the end of the day, they don't know who God and is. Really, that's who God and, is. You know, that's he controls it all. Right. And that's really, I think that's really the whole thing is because people are not really aware of who God is. When you get saved, the first thing that you have to do as a priority to yourself is know who God is. Amen. And once you know who he is, even in the scripture that we read, it teaches you that he's sovereign. Sure. And because he's sovereign, one of the things that I'm going to point out today is this term, omnipotent. Omnipotent is a Greek term, uh, it's, a, it's a theological term, I'm sorry, it's a theological term that teaches uh, certain things. Omnipotent, omni, holistically means all. Potent means power. So that means that all. God is in all, all power. power. Not some power, all, all power. Amen. Okay, so omnipotent means all power. Now, there's another uh, 
another part of sovereignty that we need to understand today. That's omnipresent. That means all present, past, present, mm -hmm. future, present, mm -hmm. and present, present. That mm -hmm. means he was present in the past yeah. and in the present and in the future. So when God looks at certain situations, he looks out of eternity into time altogether. Amen where he can see past, present, and future simultaneously. Yes. So when we understand he's, he is a sovereign God, he's also omniscient, hmm. which means he knows all. He is a master of knowledge and wisdom. So Amen. I want you to understand these three terms that I said. Now, omnipresent, omniscient, and, omni, uh, and op, op, omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent. Now, yes. sorry about that. Now, okay. understand something. If he's omnipotent in all power, all present, and all knowing, mm. then how could he make a mistake if he's operating in just that? Now, mm. he makes no mistakes. we make mistakes because we don't know the future. We operate in time that, that only puts us in present, mm -hmm. that doesn't put us in the future, mm -hmm. but we remember the past. Yes. So some of the mistakes that we make today, even continuously, is the mistakes that we've seen in the past and don't want to recreate for our future, and we still make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now, for God to make a mistake is to say he don't know what happened or what's going to happen in the future. He can't. So if he knows all that's happening, time, past, present, and future, yes. and he has all the power, then the things that's happening, don't he, is he not in control of it? Amen. Amen, amen. Some people are looking at the bad things. Yes. And they don't understand. Listen, yes. um, I, it's amazing to see how people really look at life and pass judgment on God first. Hmm. Everything that goes wrong, don't you know, God is always to blame? Hmm. Why did God allow this to happen? Why did God allow yes. that to happen? What, what, isn't God in control? Where is God? Yes. People are leaving God because they don't understand God. So even today, when we see who he is and how he, the Bible says he is not only in those three forms, but he's all wisdom, mm. all authority. Yes. He is, um, he is autonomous. This word autonomous means self-sufficient. Mm. That means this, Mozilla, even when you decide you do not want to serve God, yes. you don't have to be in a position to serve him. Why? Because he is self-sufficient. He is God himself. all by Amen. himself. Amen. He doesn't yes. need you to say he's God. Yes. See, this is what people don't understand. And they will say, I'll stop serving God. Mm. So once you stop serving God, 99% 9.99, mm -hmm. at some point, you will die. Amen. And even when you said you didn't want to serve him, you will still have to face judgment according to your standards. Yes. Amen. Amen. People all the time ask us, even as pastors, as leaders, as elders, as ministers, they ask questions all the time. Why would God allow bad things to happen mm -hmm. this way? Yes. Bad things are happening all around us every day. Amen. Why did God allow slavery to happen? Hmm. Why did God allow a child to get molested? Yes. Why would God allow people to be in a position of pain and suffering? Why wow. would God allow the things that we don't understand to happen? We're good people to our own standards, mm -hmm. but why would God allow it to happen? Yes. Why would God allow it to happen these massacres that's happening worldwide? Yes. See, the thing is not why God allows that to happen. The, the question is why is Satan influencing people to such a point where they are now Stop. doing everything necessary to complete what Satan has come out to do? Mm. And when we start to look at that, ask yourself this question. 
Is God not all powerful? Is he not all in position with authority? Hmm. Is he not the God that you and I serve? Why would it always be about how we see things? Because hmm. we can only see present. We can't see future. So the first thing, why would God allow slavery to happen? It was a horrific time. Yes. What about the Holocaust? Why would he allow yes, all of the Jews, yes. why would he allow all the Jews to be slaughtered? Hmm. We have to come to understand this. His ways are not uh -huh. our ways. Amen. And when we come to realize that, then only then can we say, I will trust him with all of my heart Amen. and lean not to my own understanding. Yeah. Why? Because his ways of thinking is not, not our ways. ways, nor his thoughts to be our thoughts. Amen. One of the things that I sat down and I asked myself is this. When we say all of that, ask yourself this question. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. In the beginning. And John 1 and 14 says this. And the word became. Mm -hmm. The word became flesh and dwelt or tabernacled among us. Yes. Now, my question is this. If Jesus Christ was the son of God. Then why did God allow his son. To die hmm. for you and me. Hmm. Uh, Wasn't it not for something greater hmm. that we didn't understand? Yeah. But we value salvation more than anything else. You know why? Because his ways are not our ways. Amen. The Bible says even when the earth was even forming, Jesus Christ was slain at the foundations of the earth. Hmm. Why? Because 2,000 years ago, God in his mind had slain his son. Hmm. You couldn't yeah. see it. I yeah. couldn't see it. Yeah. But it was something greater futuristically. Yeah. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean God is not in control of Amen. it. Amen. And when we start to realize yes. and start to trust God, we see God differently. Yeah. We see God in a way that we have to ultimately trust him. You can't trust a God if you don't understand who he is. So when you know that he's omnipotent, mm -hmm. he's omniscient, omnipresent, he is autonomous, he is in all authority, and he is all wise in all of his knowing. Yes. Then how can he make a mistake? Amen. Everything is happening right now. The Bible says is working together in Romans chapter 8 and 20 mm -hmm. for his good, not yes. yours and mine. Amen, amen. So when we start to understand who he is, it's not about you and me. Amen. It's never going to be about you and me. Never. So even today... Even our listening audience, I need you to understand this today. God ultimately is in control of everything that is going on in the world. Amen. If he wants to change certain things, he can. Yes. But we cannot pick and choose well. what we want God to change in our lives because his ways are higher than our ways. Amen. We don't know the ultimate goal of why things are and why these catastrophic events happening. Mm -hmm. But I can say this, that the earth is yearning for him to come back. Amen. We are dying and perishing day by day. This wretched body mm. is perishing. Yeah. The earth is yearning for him to come back. One of the things people don't understand is this, the birthing pains of the Antichrist is near hmm. because it teaches you even in eschatology, the stronger the pains, mm -hmm. the closer the baby. Amen. When you start seeing the birthing Amen. pains that's happening now, mm -hmm. people are dying at different levels. Catastrophic events are happening now more than ever. Things are happening to such a degree now, people are questioning 
Where is God? Well, I'm trying to make you understand. He's coming back. Yes, yes, yes. He's yes. coming back. And Amen. the people that are looking and understanding who he is must realize the first thing is this. You got to get ready for him to come back. Amen. The Bible says he's coming back as a thief mm -hmm. in the night. Mm. But ask yourself something. If he's coming back as a thief in the night, that means he's coming back for precious goods. Mm. That's good. For valuables. Mm. When was the last time a thief broke in the house and he took paper plates yeah. and plastic cups yeah. as his valuable. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to understand yeah. when he's coming back, mm -hmm. he's coming back for a people precious. that is precious amen, to him. Amen. So we have to make ourselves available and let the world know he's coming back. Yes. People need to realize and stop being so subjective of why everything that is being wrong is for them and start to see his ways are not our ways, nor his thoughts to be our thoughts. Amen. I hope today we, we reach somebody in the listening audience that understands, listen, yes. God is in control of everything that is happening. Amen. Maybe you just don't understand just yet, hmm. but you can't trust God with some of your heart. No. You've got to be able to trust him with oh. all of your heart oh. and lean not to your own understanding. To your own understanding. Amen. Because you have to see God this way at the beginning mm -hmm. of your salvation and at the end. Amen. He's sovereign. Yes. And because he's sovereign, he is in past, present, future, simultaneously mm. with all power and all knowing. Mm. And for him to make a mistake is him is for to say that he miscalculated yes. that you were going to act this way. Don't you know even today, I'm on camera and on TV and in the listening audience to let them know mm -hmm. he says to look at his ways, yes. not our own. Amen. Amen. And when we see that, Amen. let's love him. We're not part. Oh. We're not going to understand everything. Yes. Not. We're always going to struggle with the now. Amen. But just know he's our beneficial for not just here, but in eternity. Amen. Listen. That's our time today. Listen, let me just pray as a, while, while I have you online today. Yes. Father, we just pray today. And we ask, Lord God, that Thank you would you. just uh, open up uh, your, your audience where that they would hear your voice and be able to acquiesce to the sounds, Lord God, that yes, you are Lord. talking to them right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray today, Lord God, that uh, this time that we had together today, Lord God, would be beneficial to them. Yes. That now you would do things in their lives and move in ways for them to understand everything that you're doing, Lord. Yes, now Lord. touch right now, Lord God, yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus, Jesus where their name. eyes would be open yes, and Lord. their ears would be of hearing today. Yes, now Lord. do it right now, Lord, in Jesus', in Jesus mighty name. name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for visiting us at Rock San Antonio. We are excited to share with you that we are called to the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, which was the primary work of the first century church, a people who were extremely effective in executing their mission. Thus, the book of Acts records that God was adding to the church daily. Those who were being saved, Acts 2 and 47. We prioritize the kingdom mandate, God first, all others stand in line. We reach people through teaching people. We are committed to global expansion, impacting every inhabitable continent with the gospel. Please join us again and experience the kingdom of God during our discipleship on Tuesdays or Thursdays at 7 o'clock. Once again, we're located in the Rolling Oaks Mall Suite, 1199. Check us out and view our vision, beliefs, and our values on our website, www.rocksanantonio.com.